Hey everyone, it's Scott from startmedia.com, and this is a continuation of the six metrics of PageSpeed Insights. In this video, we'll be going over the time to interactive measurement, which is one of the six components that kind of makes up your PageSpeed Insights score. So time to interactive and CPU idle time, as I mentioned, are extremely similar with one caveat. The time to interactive time is more complete than the first CPU idle time. It measures how long it takes your page to become fully interactive. And the page that is considered fully interactive is broadly defined as having the following criteria. Any event handlers are going to be registered for mo most vis visible page elements. So if you have anything that handles an event, maybe a slider, so that way when it's swiped or you have a off canvas menu and you click it, it should be able to be interactive. The page has to respond to user interactions within 50 milliseconds. And the page displays the, as Google eloquently puts it, useful content, or as I like to put it, it is the above the fold content, which is going to be measured by the first contentful paint time. A note on this measurement is that both the CPU idle time and time to interactive measure broadly when the page is going to be ready for user input, but the first CPU idle occurs when the user can start to interact with the page, not when the page is fully interactive. So that's a slight discrepancy in how the two operate. Time to interactive is complete interactive time. And first CPU idle is the first point on which they can interact. Both are measured differently, but they're both very important. The time interactive time is generally considered in Lighthouse to be measured as green, which will be a fast performance score is anywhere from zero to 5.2 seconds. That would be in the top 75 to 100 percentile of websites. As you can see, mine being four seconds for some reason got a time to interactive as in orange. What that tells me is that PageSpeed Insights is using a slightly different scoring guide for some unknown reason. Also keep in mind that the metrics I'm using are Lighthouse 6, so they're the most recent and up to date. The color coding for Anything that's going to be orange, which is where this is registered at, will be 5.3 to 7.3 seconds. So there will be more leeway. This should actually get bumped the next time that PageSpeed Insights updates its API and the Lighthouse scoring. I should get a bump in my performance grade. And then anything that's over 7.3 seconds is considered slow. That is going to put you in the bottom half of websites. And that's according to data from the HTTP archive, which is just a Think of it as a giant collection of speed tests and other data that's Google's collected on websites. Now, one thing about the time to interact time is it can be improved essentially in the same way as the CPU idle time. CPU idle time, and it can be reduced by optimizing your JavaScript, so minifying it, serving code splitting particularly, is going to help you big time. If you're using pre-built theme, Avada, Divi, you may want not be able to do code splitting, but if you're using something like WooCommerce, um, if you're not using WooCommerce on your homepage, for instance, you don't need to load the WooCommerce JavaScript. By splitting it or loading it only on the pages it's necessary, you reduce its impact to only the pages that it's absolutely necessary. And this is important because it allows users on other pages of the website to have a faster experience, be able to type faster or sooner and scroll and click anything they need. Other things you could do is just reducing the amount of JavaScript you're using, particularly third-party assets. One thing that really kills websites is using too many tracking services, too, many third, too much third-party JavaScript at all. And there's not really too much you can do about it other than cutting it out and using it wisely. For instance, you have a Google Map in your footer. Do you need to use the Google Map API which is gonna be JavaScript for advanced functionality, or are you simply showing a map and you can load it via an iframe and lazy load it so it doesn't impact the user experience at all. So using the items on your page in a smarter way can go a really long way to improving your overall load time. 
and it can go very far away from improving the time to interactive time. Now, another important note is time to interactive is in a component in Lighthouse 6 for measuring your score. It has a 15% weight. What that means is the contentful paint and the meaningful paint both have a weight of 20% respectively. So they have 40% of your weight. The speed index is equal to another 10% of your score. The time to interactive, which is this video, is 15% of your weight and the total blocking time will be 20%. Now, time to interactive used to have a 33% weight in Lighthouse version five. It's been reduced dramatically because the page that loads in front of users faster and isn't visually slow is typically going to just be a much better means of measuring a fast website than one that's having a slightly above average time to interactive time. As you can see, my website's interactive time is four seconds. The CNN.com is sitting at 47.9 seconds. So a user will not be able to interact with all aspects of the website until 47.9 seconds have passed in this test on a 3G connection on a mid-range device. That's not a very good score. That would be a major hindrance to user experience, especially on anybody on a slow internet connection. So serving less JavaScript, particularly on theirs, most of it's being consumed by advertisements which is going to be the reduced JavaScript execution time and the main thread work. Other than that, it's just serving less stuff to the end user. If you have any questions about the metric, please feel free to ask it in the comments below. I'll try to answer it as best as I can in as plain English as I can. Otherwise, if you want to have your website optimized or maintained by me, you can feel free to contact me on my website. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.